talking of our Lord Jesus Christ and how God raised him from the dead. That preserve me, O God, for indeed you have put my trust. So this was the cry of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was in hell. He said, preserve me. That means to preserve something means don't let it change. Let it remain the same. You know. So don't let me decay, don't let me go into corruption. In a way, preserve, for instance, food, put salt. That salt with this high salt concentration does not allow bacteria to come to that food to destroy it. So when it says preserve me, God it says, Lord, keep me the way I was. It says, For only do I put my trust. That was the key. Because he trusted God that God would preserve him. That's how God was able to do it. See, most of us don't trust God. We pay the service that we trust God for humanity. Our hearts are somewhere else. And so we don't get the fruit result of that trust. Psalm 35, verse 20. Except for in thee do I put my trust. In thee do I put my trust. Psalm 35, verse 20. <coughs> yeah. Psalm 35, verse 20. Yes. Keep my soul and deliver me. Mm -hmm. Let me not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. I put my trust in you. That is it. I put my trust in you. If you truly trust God, then God will rise up to defend you and keep you. And this was the trust that Lord Jesus Christ had of his Father. So, oh my soul, you have said unto the Lord, You are my Lord, my goodness extends not to thee, but to the saints and the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delights. The message is that our being good, our good works, is not to God's benefits, but it's to the benefit of those on this earth that we can see. In other words, we're not doing God a favor when we are being good and righteous and holy. No. It's for our own good and for the good of those around us. Some people think that when they come to church, when they pray, when they give thanks of they are doing God a favor. No. It's yourself that you're doing a favor and those around you. God is altogether good. You cannot better him. You cannot make him more likable or more lovable. No. He is the original of love. So no human being can love like God loves. So that sorrow shall be multiplied and haste those that haste after another God. That drink of flesh of blood, line of offer, don't take up their names and their names. <coughs> So when it says they drink offers of blood, that means these people who are not other God, they use blood of human beings as their offering. They kill people in their homes. Don't think we crack is a new thing. No, it's been there even from the time of David. Remember Saul went to consult the witch of Endel when God deserted him. So witches and have always been in existence. But he says there that those that his, uh, those that worship other gods, their souls have multiplied. This is why many people in the church don't see any result of the prayers, and instead of relief, they find that prayers are compounded. Why? Because even though they come to church, they also go to the Babalawos, the Afars, somewhere to consult them. And so they, even though they come to church on Sunday morning in the evening, they're going to see one Baba somewhere in one village. Going to, so so they, they, their problems will never be solved. But God sees them. God sees them. Don't think that God doesn't know. You can pretend to the people of the church that you are good and all this. But God knows exactly where you are going and what you do in the dark. The story of a lady who, when this church first started, the member of the church, and she went to consult uh, a witch doctor. And while she was coming back, the message came to the pastor founder that one of her members had gone to see a herbalist and they would soon bring her to the church. And lo and behold, by another hour, they brought this woman, she was frozen completely. She could not talk or move. And the Lord said, This is the woman I told you. And so they sprinkled holy water on her and she came alive again. But it was a stand lesson for everybody that. When you come to this church, you don't go to seek the help of force of darkness and all these herbalists. 
In any case, they are all good to just take your money for nothing. You know, all these people practicing all this is all deception. Satan is the master of deception. All these fake miracles they are doing is nothing in it. But meanwhile, they are taking all your money, all your hand and money, giving it to them. At the end, they have nothing to show for it. See, so their sons will multiply. That means their pain will increase. It will not get better. Those that are wrong after another God. So the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You will maintain my lot. As long as you keep the Lord to be your inheritance, that means this is your portion. He will maintain your lot. He will keep you where you are. He won't allow you to fall and decay and die. He will maintain you. So the lights are falling unto me in pleasant places. Ye are the goodly heritage. All this is because he had made the Lord his portion. He did not go to seek other gods. He did not seek help from any other person. He stuck with the Lord, and therefore God maintained his lot. And the, the lights, when you see the lights are falling from the present, it means that everything is going right. There are no disasters, no disappointments, no rejections, because the Lord was his inheritance. And he continues, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My race, my heart also instructs me in the night season. You know, God speaks to us in the night season through our hearts. You know, we speak, we give us songs to sing to Him. And He says, I will bless the Lord. In the night season, I will bless Him. My soul will bless Him. And I show somebody who has the Spirit of the Lord in them, who is communicating with the Spirit of God. And He says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because of my right hand, I shall not be moved. Again, saying the same thing. Because I have set the Lord before Him, the Lord was His focus. The Lord was his attention, he didn't go anywhere else. Therefore, he's sure that he will not be moved. You know? That's the guarantee you have that you will not be shaken, you will be moved as long as you put the Lord as your right hand, as the right hand of power. As long as you maintain him, as long as he's with you, you can be sure that you will not be moved. And that's all. I shall not be. I shall not be moved, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a king. That's granted by the very river, I shall not be moved. So all the statements the Lord just was making, as was in hell, showing the trust and heart in God, and that he knew that God would not leave him in hellfire. So therefore my heart is glad. So because the confidence in had in his God, he said, My glory rejoices, my flesh shall rest in hope. What hope? <coughs> that you will not leave my soul <coughs> in hell. <coughs> Neither will I suffer the Holy One to see corruption. Mm -hmm. So that was the hope he had. <coughs> You have to ask yourself is <coughs> yeah. You have to ask yourself, excuse me, <coughs> a bit of a cough. <laughs> that God will not leave us <coughs> in a time of trouble. <coughs> rescue us. Thank you very much. So, <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ had the hope. Mm -hmm. And even though he was in hell, God will not leave him in hell fire. Mm -hmm. And that's the hope you and I have today. <coughs> that it doesn't matter where you are, what situation you are in, mm -hmm. God will not leave you there. Mm -hmm. He will rescue you, he will take you out of a valley. Let's go to Psalm, 70, uh, Psalm 49, 15. <coughs> Psalm 49, verse 15. Yeah, and Acts 2, 27. But God will be my soul. Yeah. 
S. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Redeem for the power of the grave. And it's a lot of good deeds. Mm. You know? So if you're in the grave here now, huh. you're in the valley right now, have that faith in God. Just like uh, uh, just did. And God will not leave you in that valley. He will rescue you. Acts 2.27 Acts 2.27 yes. For you will not live my son, okay? Huh? No, will you allow your holy word to see corruption? That's it. So he had the confidence that even though he had gone to hell, that God will leave him in hellfire. Hmm. But many of us, when we're in that situation, we lose all hope. Hmm. We think that God has forgotten us. And we start crying and shouting and, you know. But Jesus was not like that. He had the faith that he would not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. And that's what happened. <coughs> Jesus, nobody, no, 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 <coughs> nobody can say that, oh, this is where Jesus' bones are. No. He rose up physically into heaven. He said, I will show me the path of life. In their presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, their pleasures forevermore. You see? That will show me the path of life. In other words, after you preserve me, you will continue to show me the path of life. Acts 2.28. In their presence is fullness of joy. It's in only in God's presence that you have the fullness of joy. Nowhere else than in God's presence. <laughs> Yes. You have made known to me the mm-hmm. ways of life. Yes. You make me full of joy in your mm-hmm. presence. And that's it, in your presence. So you will not get that joy anywhere else but in Jesus, in God the Father. He's the only one that can give that full joy. So this psalm really tells us this the condition of our Lord Jesus Christ and the faith he exhibited, the faith he had, whilst it was that ter- terrible place. And that faith was what made God to raise him up because he had the assurance in his heart that God would not leave him. So you two, you and I, we have the same faith. When we go through trials and tribulations, like God, you will not let me die in this tribulation. You will take me out just like you took and you just Christ out and you raised him from the dead. You will also raise me from this affliction and revive me and preserve me. Now go to the next passage. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. Starting from verse 35. Now some man will say, How are the dead, how are the dead raised up? And with, that, and with what body do they come? A very good question. Because many people don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. In fact, in the Bible there were Sadducees. There was the other two groups of religious people. The Pharisees believed in resurrection, the Sadducees did not. So they believe that once you die, that's it. And they believe that the hell is on this earth. It's a big mistake. So this question is very relevant. Say, how are the dead raised up? Say, after you die, how can you be raised up? And with what body do they come? That was the question. So thou fool, that which thou swears is not wicked except you die. What does that mean? Unless a call of wit dies, that dies alone, meaning that if you sow anything, it has to die first before it comes alive. Imagine if you put a seed of corn in the ground, it's not that same seed that will grow. No, 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 no. That seed you put in the ground first will go in the ground, die, change the body, and grow up as something else. As I said, what I'm trying to say here that whatever you sow must die first before. Living again. Ezekiel 37 verse 3. Ezekiel 37 verse 3. And John 12 24. John 12 24. John 12 24. Ezekiel 37 verse 3 and John 12 24. Yeah. Go ahead. And he said to me, 
Mm -hmm. Son of man. Yes. Can these bones live? Mm -hmm. So I answer, Oh Lord God, mm -hmm. you know. Oh Lord God, you know. Can these bones live? That's a, that's a good question. And the Lord, the Lord's bones became human army after the flesh came upon them, the breath of life came upon them. All right, and, the, and uh, John 12, 24. John 12, 24. Yes. Most, most have sold mm -hmm. I say to you, mm -hmm. unless a grain of wheat mm -hmm. falls into the ground and mm -hmm. dies, yes. it will remain alone. alone. Mm -hmm. Because if it dies, mm -hmm. it will produce much grain. Mm -hmm. If it dies, it produces much grain. So there has to be a death for us before life. You know, most of us want life, but we're not prepared to die. So that's the way God made it. There has to be a death before life will come. That's the procedure. And he says that which you sow is not that body which shall be, but bare grain in the chest of wheat or some other grain. But God gives the body as pleased him as every seed his own body. In other words, God is the one who determines what will happen. So whatever you sow is not going to be the same that grows again. You're giving a different body. And our flesh is not the same as the same flesh. There's a, one kind of flesh of men, another of beasts, another of fish, another of birds. A celestial bodies means heavenly bodies. This is why this church is called Celestial Church of Christ. Because the church was descended from heaven. Celestial means heavenly. So there are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Terrestrial means earthly bodies. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So they're not the same glory. I'm trying to say the difference between death and life here. There's one glory for the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, and even the stars have different glory. Some have more glory than others. So, so also is the resurrection of the dead. You know, in other words, just like the glory. Of one star differs from another, glory of the sun differs the same thing with the resurrection. One glory for the dead, one glory for the living. There's one glory. So also the resurrection of the dead is so in corruption. Corruption means it decays. Was raised in incorruption. So the body you and I will have when we are raised from the dead is not going to be the same physical body we have now. This physical body is mortal. It can die, it can be decayed, it can be corrupted. But when you rise up, it will be a different body. Like the body Jesus had when he rose from the dead with the church of the disciples and he could pass through doors. Even though they locked themselves in, he appeared in the room with them. That is the celestial body is referring to. So when he says the Sunni corruption, I mean, that body, a body can die, it's made of dust. But then when it's raised up, it's no longer dust, it's immortal. So let's go to Daniel 12 verse 3. It is soon in dishonor, is raised in glory. It is soon in weakness, is raised in power. Philippians 3, 21. Philippians 3, 21. Daniel 12, 3. Matthew, Matthew 13, 43. Yes. 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 Who will, who will transform our lonely body mm -hmm. that, that is me that may be confirmed to his glorious, yes. glorious body, glorious body according to the working by which he is able, able to subdue all things to mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. He's able to subdue all things to himself. And Matthew 13, 43. Matthew 13, 43. So the body is corruptible, it can decay, it's made of dust, but when that body is raised again, it is now no longer open to decay. Matthew 13, 43. Yes. The righteousness, righteous, the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of your father. That's it. He who was years to year, yes. let him hear. That's it. So it is so a natural body. A natural body is open to sickness, to death, to injury, you know, to decay. That's a natural body. 
but it's raised a spiritual body. You see, a spiritual body is not the same as a natural because a natural body cannot go through walls, cannot travel distances in the air, whereas a spiritual body can do that. <coughs> there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it's written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. What is the difference? Living soul means like a natural man. But quickening spirit means giving life to. A quickening spirit is, is, is the last Adam, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, gives us life. It means a quickening spirit. It's not a living soul. Adam was of the earth. Jesus came from heaven. So it's a big difference. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Let's go to John 5, 21. Romans 5, 14. John 5, 21. Romans 5, 14. John 5, 14. Uh, so Romans 5, 14. John 5, 21. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And uh, Romans five fourteen. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Yes. Evil over Moses. Mm -hmm. For Adam sinned. Yes. According to the likeness of the translation of Adam, mm -hmm. who is a type of him who was to come. Oh yes. So Jesus gives life, a quickening spirit, whereas Adam was of the earth. However, the word earth was not first, which is spiritual. Well, the natural always comes first. But that which is natural, and that was that which is spiritual. So the first man, Adam, was natural, was of the earth. The second, last Adam, was of heaven, spirit. The first man of the earth, earthy. The second man, the Lord from heaven. See? The Lord from heaven. That's a big difference. First Adam was made by God and he breathed into him. God, God made Adam from the dust and he breathed life into him. Whereas Jesus came directly from heaven. So it's comparing the first Adam or the natural man to the spiritual man. So Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis 3 19. Genesis 2 verse 7. Yes. And the Lord conformed man of the dust yes. of the ground, and brethren, mm -hmm. brethren into his nostrils, mm -hmm. the breath of life, mm -hmm. and man became a living being. Let's go to um, uh, Genesis 3 19. Genesis 3 19. Verse 319. Yes. In the soil of, of your face, you shall eat bread till mm -hmm. you, you return to the ground. Mm -hmm. For out, for out, if it's you, mm -hmm. you take it. Yes. For the dust you are. Yes. And to the dust you shall return. That's it. So the first Adam came from the earth. It's like all human beings are from the earth. And that's why it's corruptible, it's, you know, can decay. But the heavenly is not the same. So as the earthly, such as though also the, the earth, as the heavenly, such as those are heavenly. As we are born the image of the earthly, so we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's good. So that's the resurrection for us. Now, as I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you and I cannot enter the kingdom of God as we are. We must be changed first. Neither <coughs> corruption inherits incorruption. You and I must be changed into a spiritual body before we can enter the kingdom of God, not with a current body. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You see, the key word is changed. We shall be changed. Philippians 3.21, I think we just read that. In the moment, the truth of an eye, the of the rapture, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So when the trumpet sounds, those of us who are on the earth will be changed into a spiritual body. 
then you can go and join God up there, but not on this earth. We cannot join God with our natural body. We must be changed first. Matthew 24, 31. Matthew 4, 6, 7, 8, 4, 15. You shall. 31. And 4, 6, 7, 8, 4, 15. Yes. And they will gather together with Elect mm -hmm. to the four winds mm -hmm. from one end of heaven to the other. Yes. Gather the Elect of the trunk and gather the elects from four winds. Go to First Thessalonians 4.15. 4 Thessalonians 4.15. So it's one of these change that will happen when we are translated from the natural to the spiritual. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? So death has been defeated. It's swallowed up in victory. Revelation 20, 14. This is the victory that God gave our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he defeated death. The death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? 2014. Hmm? We are cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. This is the second death. Mm -hmm. And anyone of That says, so death was, was also going to be cast in at the end. Death has been killing so many people. Each will be be casting at the end. Jesus Christ defeated him, him defeated death, uh, and rose again. I said, the sting of death, what kills people, what death uses to kill people is sin. I mean, somebody who does not have sin, death cannot kill them. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ. No, was no, doesn't matter how beating they gave Jesus. No. He could not die. Death could not kill him because he was sinless. He gave up his own life. See, so the sin of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. In other words, it's the law that gives sin its power. If there's no law, there's no sin, right? So for instance, if you have speed in the residential area, there's no sign that says speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour. Nobody can accuse you. But once the sign goes up and you still speed, then you say, yes, I'll give you a ticket. So the power of that sin, the, the, the power of that uh, sin is in the law that empowers that sin. This is the law, you break it and you're going to be punished. So thanks be to God, we give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the victory you and I. I celebration today, the victory that he gave, God gave him over death and defeated death. Yeah, great Lord, he came out of the grave, physically, bodily, and he was seen of like 120 people, and so many people saw him before he went up to heaven. So that's it. Romans 7 25. The victory we have, Psalm 98, verse 1. Romans 7 25. Yes. I thank God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, with the mind of, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, mm -hmm. but with the flesh of the law of sin. That's it. The mind. And some nice years was one. Some nice years was one. Yeah. Who seemed to the law in you, son, for he has done marvelous mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. His right hand and his, and his holy hand. Yes. Um, great, 
in the glory, the victory. That's it, in the victory. So we thank God for the victory that Jesus Christ had over death that God gave him. Because he lives, we can also live today. So this is the victory we are claiming, the power of resurrection today to come into every area of our lives. Whatever is dying, this is corrupt, this, that is corruptible. God should give it like the mortal life. As I said, I sing that song, eternal life. Eternal life means this life does not end. It's no longer corruptible, it's not limited by death. It goes on forever. So we thank God for that victory. If you go to this same chapter 15, and focus on 15, if you go, it says that if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then our faith is in vain. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17. For if the dead rise not, then this then, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. You see? So it's the resurrection that seals the plan of salvation. Without the resurrection, salvation is not complete. So those who stop at the death of Christ, they're not telling the full story. The story is only completed as it rose again from the dead. That's when everything is sealed. If you did not rise, you are still in your sins. So we thank God for that resurrection. And if you're watching me today, if you have not yet made the decision to surrender your life to Christ, don't leave it any longer. Christ has died and risen again just for you to give you that eternal salvation, to, to give it to you. So don't waste any more opportunities. Take hold of it today. Accept the Lord today. Just say this simple prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I've sinned against God and man have mercy and forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Come inside my heart, rule and reign over my life. Make, make, I'll make him a Lord and Savior. Take my name from the book of the dead and put my name in the book of, the, of life. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. That's it. Just say that prayer wherever you are before you go to bed. And God Himself will come inside your heart and reveal His glory to you. Let us pray, Jehovah. Jesus Christ, we thank you for the word of life, the word of resurrection you give us today. Let that word remain permanently in our lives. As Christ rose from the dead, let us rise from the deadness of our lives. As the defeated death, hell and the grave, let us defeat hell and the grave in our lives, in our finances, in our ministry, in our bodies. Let the life of Christ reign and rise up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And that's it. <coughs> Continue to read the word of God and God will answer to you. Amen. Uh, no, at the top. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it.